Hello friends, I'm back to crafting after a rather long break and today I'm going to make a shaker card. I'm going to demonstrate how you can turn a plain clean and simple card with a circle window into a fish pond scene just by adding a few realistic details. So without further ado, let's get started. We are going to need a side folding card base that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I have also die cut a panel that is slightly smaller than my card base. I have also used nested circle die set to cut out three rings out of white cardstock. The outer outline is uh, three and a quarter inches. These two die sets are the ones that I'm using the most. In fact, I'm using them for nearly every project. So this is something that I would definitely recommend you to have whether you are a beginner or an advanced crafter. The next step is layering all three ring die cuts to create more dimension. I'll be using them as one element on this card. Then I'm using the same die that I used for the inside of the circle to cut out an opening on a panel. The diameter of this die is uh, two and three quarter inches. Then I'm going to use my favorite embossing folder. It is called Bricked and it's by Sizzix. You have probably seen me using it about 100 times. Now I am applying Antique Linen Distress Oxide ink on one side of the folder and I'm also adding uh, some peeled paint, which is green, randomly to imitate the moss. Then I'm placing the panel inside the folder and I'm going to run it through the die cutting machine just as usual. Now I'm going to repeat this process to expand the pattern to cover up the panel completely. This folder is great for creating a bricked wall texture as well as the pavement texture. This time I'm going for the pavement. Now when the pavement is ready, I'm going to create the water for my pond. I'll be applying some watercolors onto the wet paper. And uh, here is the little tip. If you wet the paper on both sides, it's going to stay flat and it's not going to curl up while you are working. This way the water is not going to run off your paper and you don't even have to tape the paper onto the surface. I'm going to use peerless watercolors, but of course any watercolors will do for this technique. What I'm doing is I'm uh, wetting the brush, picking up some color and I'm dropping it onto the wet paper. I'm using some blues, teals as well as a little bit of olive green there. I keep adding the colors and then I'm going to set this paper aside to let the colors blend and dry. For the fish, I'm going to use a smaller piece of paper. I have applied water on both sides, just like I did before. And now I'm basically creating one bigger pink stain and also randomly adding some yellow color, leaving plenty of white space as well. You'll see later what it's going to look like. Now when the colors are dry, I'm going to apply some uh, double-sided tape at the wrong side of my panel and stick down a piece of acetate to create a shaker card. This piece of acetate will also enhance the water texture since it's so shiny. Now I'm choosing which portion of the water background I'm going to frame and uh, then I'm using the scissors to trim off all the excess. You'll see later that I'm going to use that little trim off piece as well. Next I'm going to take that dimensional ring piece that I have created at the very beginning. I'm going to apply some liquid glue and stick it down uh, so that it frames uh, the window. I have also applied two layers of foam tape at the wrong side of the panel and now I'm going to create the fish. I'll be using this die called Lovely Koi. It's by Poppy Stamps. 
I'm placing it so that the pink stain will be somewhere around his head and then I'm sending it through the die cutting machine and what it does it also creates some scale texture. Now I have applied some uh, double-sided uh, foam tape at the wrong side of the fish and I'm sticking it onto my water background. And now I'm ready to add some sequins to finish off the shaker element. I'll be using three different sequin mixes, all by cat scrappiness. The first one is those clear iridescent shells, very suitable for my theme. Then I'll be using a set of teal sequins to create the water sparkle, and the last one are clear sparkling sequins. All those sequins paired with the watercolor background are going to add some sense of movement to the water. So now I'm peeling off the liner from the panel and I'm sticking it uh, down onto the background. I'm applying some double-sided tape onto the wrong side of the background and I'm placing this panel onto the card base. You have probably noticed that I have decided to change the black card base to the white one. I think it is going to look better for this project. The next step is adding the sentiment. I just wanted to say sparkle and I'll be using this dye by Poppy Stamps. To create some color I'll be using this washi tape by Altenew. It has a very nice gradient and I'm just uh, sticking it onto a piece of white cardstock. Then I'm placing uh, the sentiment on top and sending it through the die cutting machine. All the supplies that I'm using for this project will be listed in the description below the video as well as on my blog. The product list that is on the blog also has pictures, so you can find the products quite easily. I'm also going to add uh, two additional layers to the sentiment. I have uh, basically cut them out of white cardstock and I'm sticking them at the back. So now I'm attaching my sentiment onto the card front with a liquid glue. Now I just have to add one more tiny detail to make this circle window look even more like pond. I'll be using this uh, Water Lily tiny die set. It's also by Poppy Stamps. I've die cut the leaves out of leftover watercolored paper. And uh, they also have some uh, nice debossed texture to them. I'm attaching one leaf right onto the acetate and the other two are going to stick out of the pond a little bit and it's going to tie up this window with the background even more. I'm also going to use the tiny leftover pieces from uh, die cutting the sentiments and uh, I've die cut the lily flowers themselves and now I'm attaching them uh, onto the leaves as well. They are going to coordinate uh, with the sentiment as well as uh, with the fish. So this is what my fish pond shaker card looks like. It feels like spring to me. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Have a beautiful week and I hope to see you again really, really soon. Bye!